Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another IAPCNM hosted masterclass, this time with the dynamic Matt Elwell. So how are you today, Matt? Yeah, really good. Uh, I'm in London. I'm speaking this afternoon at a big live event with lots of coaches and trainers and consultants. So I'm really, really excited, actually. So you're pumped and this is a dummy run. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, I'm Dawn Campbell, your host. Please turn on your videos, put in the chat box who you are, where you're from, uh, and that's what we'll use for questions arising as we go. And as usual, we'll finish with that all important CPD. But let me introduce Matt to you properly. I know he's well known among the IAPCM as a regular speaker and within the com coaching community generally. So he's somebody like you and me who's come up through the coaching ranks and for the past, past five years has been the co-founder of Elite Closing Academy. He's over two decades of pure sales experience. So it's no wonder he's the go-to sales trainer and coach. He's also the author of The Must Have, Open With A Close, a book I reviewed a long time ago. So if you're new to sales or you have a fear around the whole sales conversation, which is, after all, just another conversation, you'll find his book really reassuring. And the techniques will ensure you close with that, that conversation, uh, with that all-important sales close, not just with the, the closing goodbye. So I encourage you to read that. So as you just heard Matt say, who's is speaking at a big gig this afternoon, he's a renowned public speaker. And having done the circuits as a guest speaker, he recently celebrated being the host of his own sellout two-day conference. So congratulations, Matt. That must have been a very special moment. It was. <laughs> Thank you. So Matt's on a mission, an obvious mission to change the way the world sells. So we achieve better conversion rates, take on more clients and grow our businesses. And that's why we're here today, isn't it? To learn from the best. But before I hand over to Matt, I always like to share something a little bit unique or special or different. Um, and I'm pleased to share because we all need these people. Matt is an ambassador for hedgehogs. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love a hedgehog? I was so excited the other day. I thought I'd seen a really big hedgehog in the garden, but it was a leaf stood on its side. <laughs> uh, I worry that the dogs kind of put the uh, the hedgehogs off, but I'm 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 ever hopeful with my binoculars. I will see one. So grab your uh. CPD logs and prepare to take copious notes because Matt is as usual is going to share a ton of valuable content you won't want to forget. Over to you, please, Matt. Morning all, thanks so much Dawn, so, so kind of you, and uh, yeah, I, I am, uh, I do my little bit for hedgehogs, uh, in Birmingham, uh, here here in the UK, we actually increased the population of hedgehogs by 14% between 2020 and 2022, really just by raising awareness, so it, you know, it can be done. Uh, so good morning, um, just type yes if you can hear me loud and clear in the chat box please or a thumb, or a, a, a head nod, or, right, great, cool. And I know there's quite a few people catching up. So look, um, a couple of things I like to say before I start, uh, and that is I've prepared, you know, a, a training really around, you know, how do you how do you get new clients by being conversational? And the way I like to do things is, like everybody else on here, I'm a teacher and I'm a practitioner uh, of my trade. And um, I like to give, like, information that you can actually use so i'd invite you to get a pen and and some paper and i, I am really good to be interactive uh, and at the end we've got a little bit of time um for you to ask me any questions and i know that this is almost impossible uh for like-minded people but i want you to be selfish with your questions like ask me questions um about how you could make sales in you know even more sales and help even more people uh in the q a if you can so just start thinking about that and just be really selfish, like make it personalized to you. So one other thing from me, um, everything I say today is, um, is well, I want to, I want to, I want to say I'm respectful of cultural differences. I'm re respectful of, uh, global challenges, religious positions. Uh, I, I want to be re really respectful. I'm not here to make anybody right or anybody wrong. Um, I'm just here to share my philosophy on how I think sales should be done uh, in in the world right now. And um, hopefully that will stimulate some thinking and stimulate some uh, opportunities to grow and learn. And if you do feel any resistance, that that's fine. 
um, write it down and move towards the resistance would be my advice. All right. So if you're ready to get going, let's go for it. Um, give me a hedgehog emoji if you're ready to go for it. See, that'll get you, won't it? you got to find the hedgehog emoji somewhere. <laughs> it's in there somewhere. There you go. I'm, I'm loving I'm loving everyone. Look, there you go. There you go. Look, hedgehog emojis already. I love it. So, look, let's let's go for it. I've got a few little questions for you. Question number one, a good question to ask. Um, uh, oh, you can see all my slides. Great. Um, let me. Uh, right. Is that better? Yeah, cool. So uh, question number one, I always say, why sales? Why sales important? And I think uh, it's a good question to ask yourself. And I think firstly, right here, right now, whether you like it or not, you can be amazing at marketing and generating leads. And remember, leads are human beings. Never forget that. Um, but ultimately, if you can't find a way that feels natural and congruent to you in line with personal values to actually exchange contracts where they give you commitment, time, money, and energy, then um, you can be the greatest marketer on the on the planet. But if you can't sell in line with, with your natural start, then it's always going to be difficult. So sales for me is the quickest way to grow your business. And it's also the quickest way to have an impact on the planet. So I think it's worth remembering that. Um, the second question really is, is like, why should you be great at sales? And again, I always think, um, you know, you should never go into a sales conversation feeling uncomfortable and you should never make anybody else feel uncomfortable. So that little green face, uh, my children say it's called the ick. So um, like sales is meant to be natural. It's meant to be elegant and effortless and graceful. So I think it's really important that as a practitioner or as practitioners, we become professional salespeople. And I think it's perfectly okay and reasonable to want to be one of those things. Um, and I think, you know, right now, the reason why you should focus on these uh, skills is because let's face it, uh, we've got AI, we've got marketing, we've got like all these amazing funnels and websites and podcasts and, and all that kind of stuff. So what that means is now there are more human beings than ever before looking for our services. And if you're in a competitive environment, <coughs> type yes. If you're in a competitive environment in the box below. Yeah, so like if you're in a competitive environment, I've got some good news for you. Nearly all of your competitors will be absolutely rubbish at sales. They just will. They'll think that you can hide behind a computer, send a few emails, do a few Facebook Lives, do a bit of social media, and everyone will just come and give you loads of cash, and it doesn't work like that. So get great at this right now, and in between now and the 31st of December, take some extreme ownership of sales right now in your business. And I think you'll be amazed at what's possible. Uh, lastly, why should you listen to me? Well, as, as Dawn said, like there's loads and loads and loads and loads of sales information out there. And there's lots of people doing it and saying it. Um, I think a few things that probably stand my philosophy out is one, I'm a family man, which what does that mean to you? It, it means that the thing I'm working on the most at the moment is is to separate my life and business. And um, I think that's important because um, I'm working on being, um, like, I don't want to be associated as a human with how I perform at work. I want that to be different and separate. So um, when I am at work, um, it's, it's like a real important focus for me. Uh, when I am at home, that is a real important focus for me as well. So um, I, I am building a global training company that's specifically designed to see other people get results. Um, and I, I'm looking to do it in, in an ethical way. Um, I think the other thing is everything I teach when it comes to selling uh, is aligned with our company values. So I've got seven values. And I think one of the challenges with sales is that actually it's not regulated. So there are a lot of, you know, charlatans out there, there are a lot of coaches and consultants who set up in their bedroom and put on their website, you know, they're the UK's leading life coach or whatever, uh, with no evidence at all, and uh, try and lead the David Lloyd lifestyle and make five or six grand a month and not work. 
very much. And the problem is that the consumer, the buyer, it's very hard for them to tell whether or not they're dealing with um, somebody that's legitimate. Um, so where values come in um, is when you live your values and bring, bring your values into your sales conversations, uh, buyers notice that you're not um, winging it. They notice that you're considerate, professional, well-organized. Um, you're in control of your words and phrases and statements. You can answer simple, simple questions like how much is it you don't turn into a puddle and start rabbling on like you've got good skills and um and, and you've got value so here's my seven when i'm selling number one is loving people um that's at the, the center of everything so when i've got a possible buyer a prospect i make sure i love them by understanding them uh, before i sell anything to them actually the sales process is to understand what they would need to get for it to be a great investment and um by not having that result, what's the problem in their life? That's how great people sell. The next thing is to be dynamic and daring. Um, and what I mean by that is if you think about conversations that you have where you get off the phone or you come off the Zoom and you're like, I played it so safe. Why didn't I just say what I was thinking? You know, um, and if if you maybe that's not you, but for, for a lot of people, um, they just say the same things. Like people go, "Oh, it sounds really interesting. I can't afford it at the moment. Ring me in the new year." And people that are not trained and don't have this value, they go, oh, "Okay, then." See you in the new year, and then you ring them in the new year, they don't answer, and then you just play this weird game. Whereas being dynamic and daring is to lean into what led them to move towards you in the first place. Um, what would need to happen for it to be a priority now? What results would they need to get for them to genuinely, seriously consider continuing the conversation? And that that requires courage. You've got to have that value. Um, otherwise, you just kick things down the line. Now, the next thing is getting results. Like I built this company. I started this company from my kitchen table um, in 2017 with no customers, nothing. Um, and, and what I did do is just find one customer that needed my help and get them an amazing result. And and my my advice to anybody, and I'm sure everyone's doing this anyway, but um, make sure they get a result at the end, and it's clear and obvious to them, uh, and you'll get you make lots more sales. Uh, in sales, there are too many people that lie, so it's like never lie, um, never say things that you don't mean, and and do what you said you would. Uh, it's like a really important thing, and that means following up, getting back to people, um, you know, just all the the good quality behaviors and that's actually by the way um what ethics mean is, is is like ethics is about behavior so it's like just having uh, a real ethical value of doing what we said it would and my rule is to under promise and over deliver in sales not to over promise and under deliver which a lot of people do uh, then be open and real you know sometimes people say to me matt look i'm, I'm really interested i've downloaded your book um, but, you know, I've got to move some money around. I need to speak to my partner and I need this and I need that. And I go, look, open and real. It's not my job to get you to buy from me. That's not my job. So at the moment, you've downloaded my book. You've shown an interest and you're giving me lots of reasons why you now don't want to work with me. And that's fine. I'm good. Why don't you tell me the truth? Like, what what, what do you really need from me? Or I, maybe I'll go away. And go, like, I'm only here because you've moved towards me. So, and I call this like an elegant out. It's like, I, I'm, I'm good. Like, I, 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 it's not meant to be my idea to get you to buy from me. Like you're meant to, why don't you give me some reasons why you'd buy from me? And then we could maybe consider if we work together, what's the truth. And I think what that does is you have to use your own elegance and your own gracefulness, and you've got to bring your own personality into it. But what it does, it just cuts the wheat from the chaff it just gets rid of all the, can I say bullshit? I've just said it. Sorry. Um, sorry, not that word. Um, it just gets rid of all the fluff. You know, it's like, come on, how can I help? Maybe I can't. I'm good with both. You tell me. Um, and, and let's just be open and real with each other. And, and that's really worked for me. As long as it's in service of the other person, it, it really works for me. Uh, the other one is to bring energy and fun. Like, here's a good question for you. What are you like to buy from? 
are you awkward and are you like really submissive or just let me know if you're interested because by the way no one gives you money if you're submissive because they go well if i give that person money like they're probably going to lose it they're that submissive um and then the, the opposite's true as well you don't want somebody's like just give me your money you don't want that either um but you do you do want some harmonious certainty that when you invest in somebody's product or service and give them money they're not going to run off you know and you're going to get a return and they're going to do what they said they would so um you know what do you like to buy from what's your energy like you remember you're meant to be easy to buy from that's that's really important so check in with that and then lastly like practice self-awareness and humility and how that's really served me over the years is to see the conversation from the prism of the other person and really to put myself in the other person's shoes so when i'm selling um, I ask lots of questions and gather lots of information before deciding how to move forwards. And, and that's the the value that I use. So, I mean, you're welcome to take a photo of that if you want. I'm sure you've got your own uh, values. But anybody that's trained by me, um, and I've got, I mean, at the moment, I've got 135 business owners in my academy, my 12-month academy. Um, and, you know, that's like 20, 20,000 or 10,000 group coaching, basically. Um, and then I've had thousands of people attend my trainings and I've got 26 staff and they're all trained by me uh, and they're all trained in, in line with those values. So um, I'd urge you when you're selling to, to do something similar. Lastly on this, if a prospect is not aligned with a value, I'll call them out on it early. Um, so I go, let me just stop you. Um, and I need to lean into self-awareness and humility here. But right here, right now, uh, I'm not sure where I fit into this and I'm not sure whether this is a good match for me. And that's where the value um, gets rid of time wasters and people that are not a good fit. And and, and, it, and it's it's in a non-conflict way. So um, I wrote a book a few years ago. Dawn mentioned it. Uh, she actually did a, a review of the book, which was great. And um, the, the book's called Open With A Close. So it's, it's based on my philosophy and framework around um, starting with the end in mind and working backwards. And I actually teach it. That's my that's my training center in Solihull, Birmingham. And I have people fly in, zoom in from all around the world. And what I teach is um, really um, that was that was a, a talk I did in Dubai. Same philosophy. Um, it's to start with the end in mind and work backwards all the time. So um, I've got a bit of philosophy for you before I get into some of the detail. So my key philosophy uh, of opening with a close, start with the end in the mind, cut cut to the quick, and um, get to what what the truth is. Is very much always look to get a win for the customer. Um, so make sure that when they buy, they get an amazing result. Make sure you're dealing with a client that wants to be there. So it shouldn't be your idea to buy. It should be them. So you want to get a win for you, a motivated client, uh, and also a win for the universe. And, and what I mean by that is is literally, um, you know, when we do business together, we should all be consenting and both parties should be coming out the other side even stronger. All right. Uh, David says, part of the Marshall Goldsmith philosophy, I don't know that philosophy, Um but I'll check it out, is never take a bad engagement, similar to the values concept. Yeah, love it. Really good. Beautiful. Uh, another part is I believe in connection, heart to heart, human to human. I actually believe um, being conversational is the best way to connect. And this thing here is a computer with a phone on it. So again, I, I encourage people to stop hiding behind emails, never sell or negotiate on an email. Use your voice, um, voice note, video note, um phone call like when they can hear you they can sense your passion your compassion your love your energy when they can't hear you they're just reading black and white words and it might read wrong or you might have meant the words in a different way to how they read them so uh, use your voice your voice is a gift it's an amazing gift and ai like when ai is being used you can tell it's not a real human voice um uh, and and that is your gift so use it uh, and then lastly i think on this i believe that when i'm selling that i really take the mindset of a, a gp or a doctor and you know you don't hobble into the doctors with a bad foot and they go sit down you need heart surgery let's get you operated on now it doesn't work like that and again you think about some of the sales people that like diagnose what your problem is before they find out what your problem is and, and, and a lot of them use assumptions and presumptions of people like you and businesses like yours. And the problem is those ones that are untrained, they've only got to say one thing that the prospect's not thinking and they've, they've screwed it for life. 
So um, ask questions, be curious, uh, find out what the truth is. I have a framework in my in my book, by the way, um, which I'm going to give you a free copy of if you want it at the end. <clears throat> I'll actually send one to your house for free, uh, only if you want it. There's a framework in there called Punt with a Q. It's when you're having a conversation, what are you meant to do and what are you meant to ask? And there's loads of questions that I use, and some of them you'll love, some of them you might not love, um, and some might just stimulate. But but like when you're selling, you're not meant to solve anything when you're selling. So the rule is never solve when you're selling. The solution comes in the service that you provide when they pay you. That that's when you should solve it properly, you know. Um, so that's a, a big part of the philosophy. And so look, I've got a framework and a formula. And there are five key things to my formula. And there's a lot of layers, but to start with, um, there's there's five key things that I think if you're going to have conversations that convert, uh, then you've got to have a bit of structure. What we don't want when we're selling is we don't want you to be emotional. So the buyer is emotional. They have to be. Uh, they haven't got all the facts yet. Um, so when emotion meets emotion, it's not good in a conversation. Um, what you want is for you to be confident, organized and structured during that conversation while they're being emotional. So I'll give an example of emotion. Like clients will go, uh, pro prospects will say, so uh, Dawn, I'm really uh, interested to work with you, but just, I want to ask you, how much is it? Well, that's an emotional question. And they actually don't care the answer because they've, they've, already, they've already checked you out online and looked at your website and all that kind of stuff. They've already got a feel for it. But they ask you that to see how you answer and how certain you are. So if you then like, oh, well, you know, it all depends and we've got this and that and we'll have to ask you loads more questions. They're like, hmm, I asked you a simple question. You haven't given me a simple answer. And they're going, yeah, yeah, but that, how much is it? And like, oh, well, you know, it all depends. And, you know, what? I don't want to quote them the high price just in case they can't afford it. And now straight away, their internal red flag system is literally kicking off. They're like, like, do not give this person money. It's massively uncertain. Tell them it sounds a lovely. You can see the value. Pop it on an email. I'll have a think about it. It's not the right time. I can't afford it. I've got Christmas coming. Like, I need to have a think about it. And that all came because their emotional defense mechanism picked up that you're not certain around money. So this is why you've got to have skills. So, like, you might be saying, well, what should I say? Uh, like, somebody says to me, Matt, how much is it? I always say, thank you very much for asking. And that gives me a reminder to be logical and not emotional in, in that moment and not to judge why they're asking me the question, just to answer the bloody question they asked. It's not, it's not, it's a ridiculous question, by the way, because like I've got multiple different prices and multiple different products and it depends on what they want, but it's still a fair question. How much is it? So I would say, thanks for asking. Uh, look, my most successful clients invest up to 50,000 per year on a private client basis. You can start your journey in my community for as little as two pounds 80 and purchase a book and then everything in between now you know the money let me ask you a few questions and find out how i might be able to help you or not so it's like skills logic then we can get into you know the conversations and all the rest of it and what that does it settles them down it, it makes them realize they're dealing with somebody that's done this before that's a pro that's not desperate for money that's not scared of money uh, and, and you're off and running. So um, here's, here's the framework. Um, the first part of the framework is very much around um, sales confidence. So, you know, on a scale of 0 to 10, 10 is like really confident, organized, structured, focused. Um, you've got massive faith and belief in your product and service. That would be a 10. 0 is you're winging it. When it comes to sales, you're like all over the place. What's your current number on confidence? What would you give yourself? You can type it in the box if you want. Nine, six, five. Um, thank you very much for, for everybody, honestly, four. And so what we have to do is remember that um, your number is just your number. Uh, and well done for answering it. So now what you've got to think about is if you were buying from yourself, so if you were buying from yourself, so if you were the buyer and they they met you and they sensed that you were a three out of 10 or a five out of 10 on confidence, like, do you think that's going to be helpful for them to buy or unhelpful? Well, you don't even have to answer that. It's a rhetorical question, but you can lean in and answer unhelpful if you want to. Um, 
you know, but the, the, the point is, is that, um, yeah, exactly. Helen says, I wouldn't buy, and neither would I. Because you'd see in front of you somebody that doesn't have the faith or belief in their product or service and therefore need your money more than you need the result that you get when you work with them. And and by the way, this is why you got to get your skills up. Um, because when your skills are high, fear's low. When your skills are low, fear's high. And that impacts your confidence. And I'm going to give you a couple of things that you can do today. The next one is, is the right mindset. And I think, again, what I mean by that is... Um, I know I'm in good company when when in this group where like you all know this, right? What you think, what you say inside and what you say outside in the moment will create what happens next in your life. So by the way, I did some study on this and the word, it's a really amazing word. Uh, in this country, I think in the UK, it's a bit of a cheesy word, actually. The word that I found that's linked to all this is an ancient Hebrew word. It's Arabic. And the word is abracadabra. And it means that we create what we speak. That's the summary of it. So like, if in your mind, you're saying, like, if you're a four or a five out of 10 on confidence and you're going, oh my gosh, this sales conversation, it's like, oh, they're probably not going to be able to afford it. And oh my gosh, what am I going to do if they ask me that? And like, yeah, it's going to be more than I spend it. I'll be bothering them. Like, what if I screw it up? And all, like, if you've got that stuff going on in your head, what happens is you create a low consciousness in the conversation and they vibe and sense that you're a nice person, but for whatever reason, when it comes to the sales bit, you're a bit awkward or a bit uncomfortable. And then that creates them to be uncomfortable and awkward. And, and now you've got two negative forces, even though you've got probably two lovely human beings. So there's another way of thinking and we have to own what we think. So it's to take full ownership of what, what we think. And again, in my book, by the way, um, I've got a system uh, to think. Uh, there's a five-point system. Uh, the first five points of my framework is about this. Um, because when you go into a conversation where you go, like, I've got everything I could possibly need. I've got all the skills I could possibly need so that whatever happens next, uh, I'm good. Well, that creates a completely different vibe, and it's, it's a much more positive vibe. It's a bit like if you go out for dinner with a friend. Like, you might have thought, what are the things that we're going to chat about very quickly? But then once you're there, you're not going, well, if they say this, I've got to say that. And if they ask me this, I'm wondering why they asked. And that. can they afford it? What about this? What about that? You don't do that with a friend. You're much more natural. So you have to work on your mindset. And uh, sales and closing is, is like a muscle. It's, it's a daily thing. The next one is, I always say, if you want to get your mindset right, the first thing you got to do is get your words and phrases and statements and answers to simple questions like, how much is it? What do I get? What happens if it doesn't work? What's the return on investment? All that kind of stuff. Practice the answers to those and give your body and your brain muscle memory and, and get your words and phrases and statements in order and sequence so that it sounds natural and work on it. Like, you know, when you watch somebody in a movie, um, they have rehearsed and practiced and read their lines and learned it. You know, when you see Usain Bolt running, he didn't turn up at 5 to 11 and just do one stretch and start sprinting. You know, for the last four years, he's been training and practicing. And, and you know, why would it be any different with a conversation? It's like, don't wing it. Don't wait for the conversation to happen or the problem to come. Practice it. Like, here's a great one for, for you. I do this all the time. I say to my team and myself, write down one thing that you get asked in a sales conversation that makes you feel slightly uncomfortable. And then practice not being uncomfortable. Like it's just so obvious, isn't it? So um again, I, I work really hard on my communication, on, on my words, my statements, my phrases. I'm practicing, I'm thinking about like words matter, they really do. So so work on it. The next one is like how to say it, and that's really about tone. Like we live in a world where yes means no and no means yes. Buyers say things they don't mean. Oh, David, I can see the value in it. Sounds amazing. Um, pop it on an email. I'm going to speak to my partner and I'll get back to you next week. You know that they're not when they say that. You just do. So you've got to, you've got to hear what they really meant uh, and you've got to listen out for things and um, like possible buyers give a lot of signals by saying things in certain tones and also give a lot of signals by things they don't say. 
and you've got to learn to listen listen out for that it's, re- it's really important and then lastly like you got to know what to say and when um you, you know if you're going to exchange a contract and the sale is over there's no questions left then the last thing you want to do is ask the wrong question an example of that is um if i'm exchanging a contract um then i will ask an exchanging contract question if i'm exchanging a contract i won't say so like are there any other questions or what else do you need to know or how else do you think i can help you like that those are sales questions and they should have been dealt with earlier uh, by the time I'm at the end, I'm like, right, so um, here's the logical next step. Um, which option do you want to take? Like, which date do you want to go with? Like, something progressive. Uh, so I think you, you've got to make sure that you you know what to say and when. So that, that's the framework. Um, and now what I want to do is, is is delve into a little bit of training for you. Before I do, um, I'd like you um, just to type in the box below. If you have a look at your notes, just, just type in something that's resonated with you or something that, that you've learned. David says range of offerings re cost yet. Um, Helen, I haven't ever rehearsed questions and answers yet. Uh, thank you for asking. It just buys you a bit of time. Remembers to be logical, not emotional. Uh, value keeping it real, yeah. Um, challenge response such as yeah. I think it's just to lean into people that give like really neutral responses and go. You know, people say to me, "Can you ring me in six months?" And I go, "Do you know? What? I think I'm going to leave it. I'll leave it. Thanks. Let's talk about it now. What do you need?" I might be dead in six months. Like, I go, of course I'll ring you in six months. And just before I do, like, what what could we chat about now? <laughs> you know, I'll just lean into it because it's like, I don't want to have people in my pipeline who want to talk to me in six months. I'm like, what's the point? <laughs> so, yeah, love it. Good. Right. Um, I'm going to have to go fairly quickly here because I've, I've, um, I've over, I'm over delivering. I have put too much in. Anyway, I'm going for it. So you've got to put, like, you're going to have writer's cramp in a minute, right? So remember, sales confidence. Confidence means um, being able to rely on somebody somebody or something that you can fall back on. So it's to have the faith or belief in somebody or something you can rely upon. So firstly, I want you to be an owner, not a victim with sales. You can learn it. Uh, there's If you like my style, learn it from me. If you don't like my style, learn it from somebody you like. Um, but learn how to sell in line with your values and don't hide from it. Don't be, don't blame the economy. Don't blame other people. Just own it. Be an owner, not a victim. Just get great at it. You can do that now. Okay. Um, so here's a few things you've got to do. Um, firstly, you've got to like really commit to getting yourself into a place when you have a sales conversation that you are a 10 out of 10 uncertainty. And what I mean by that is that you're not looking to get them to buy you're not looking to make them do anything. You're not looking to get them to do anything, right? And, and you've got to surrender to you wanting somebody else to do something. And you've got to see yourself as a conduit and as a guide or not. Like, just let go of, of, of feeling like you've got to get them to do something all the time. And the way to do that is to get confident and organized and focused and to make it very clear from the outset, my job is to ask you a few questions. If it feels like we're a great fit, you're probably then going to want to ask me some questions. Then, if we still feel like there's no questions left and we're a great fit, I'm going to make you an offer with some options on. And then you get to decide which option is going to get you the best result or not. That's how this is going to work. Like when you get there, it creates massive certainty. Um, if it's a process, um, you're detached from the outcome. Uh, you get rid of time wasters immediately and your conversions go through the roof. That, that's what you got to do. Okay. People buy from people that are certain. That's the most important thing. So no, don't wing it. Don't be wishy-washy kind of thingy wingy. Let me get back to you next week with a long email. It's like deal with it. Talk to them in the moment and create certainty. The next thing you got to do is get massive clarity on your offer. I see this in the, in the, in the helping people space that we're in, where we care about others. Like, when was the last time you reviewed your offer? And by the way, you want it in writing. And I want you to think like luxury yacht, not the dinghy. So when somebody buys it, 
I want it to be like a premium product, a premium service, access to everything, access to all the answers, access to all the online videos, access to like give them everything, add 10 times the amount of love in it, 10 times the amount of service in it. Like don't hold things back, put it all in and go all in um, and, and have it in document that is not loads of words like that document there. I call it a written proposal. It's a tool to stimulate sales discussion to a point where there's no questions left. So somebody might say to me, Matt, I'm really interested to join your academy. What do I get? I go, great question. Over 12 months, you'll walk away with a bespoke and personalized sales process for you. How else can I help you? Like answer and ask. Keep it like on point. Don't go into the big, long, detailed discussions. The detail can come in the discussions if it's required. Um, but like you don't want to kill people with over analysis. Keep your offer simple, make it irresistible and make sure that when somebody purchases it, they're like, yes, I'm, I'm going to get everything I need. Uh, and then lastly on this, always have two financial options. Uh, the way I do it is I'll give you an example. This was a few years ago now. Um, uh, one of my coaching programs, there are two options, right? Uh, to join Gold Group. You can put 3000 down and then 11 payments of 499 By the way, this is four years ago. It's more than that now. Or you can make a single payment of 6995 and that saves you 1500 quid. Which one suits you best? So people go, can you do me a discount? I go, yeah, the single pay. Saves you 1500 quid. I can't afford it. Great, do the split pay. Put the deposit down and then pay me monthly. Like, that, that's all you got to do. Give them options and then let them choose. Don't get involved with the money. Like It's a bit like a menu, you know, a restaurant. You go to a steak restaurant and there's five different steaks. Chateaubriand, 150. Porterhouse, 125. Rump's 20. Like, which one do you want? Just don't get involved with it. Let, let them choose. And that's what an offer is. Make it irresistible. Put it in writing. Uh, and you'll, you'll be amazed at how that assists your sales. Um, next thing, I believe in serving, selling, and closing. And the best way to do this is to look at the opposite. If you serve so much and you forget to sell or exchange contracts or at least agree, agree what happens next, you'll end up doing the opposite of serve. The opposite of serve is to hold back. So if someone's confused, they've got too much information, you've hit them with all that love and information, and they end up don't buying because they're confused, you'll hold them back. So that's why you've got to sell properly. So selling is to understand whether they're a good fit or not and to understand the challenges they've got that you would solve. Um, and then if you feel like it's a good fit, that's the time to exchange the contract and close. Now, again, the opposite of sell is get. So if you're trying, to, if you're ever trying to get someone else to do something, just stop and say, do you know what? I need to ask you a better question because at the moment it feels like I'm doing the work for you to buy from me and that's, that's the wrong way around. So here's a question for you. What result would you need to get by working with me for this to be a great investment and for you to seriously consider prioritizing it? That's how you sell. Don't get them to do it. Ask them through it. That's how you sell. Right. And then lastly, um, never leave anything open-ended. So always close the logical next step. And that doesn't have to mean they've got to give you money, but at least agree what you're going to do next and what would happen next time that's different to this time. And that way, again, you'll you'll create some process uh, progress in your in your in your in your sales process. All right. Um, look, last thing really on this, make sure you use great language. So, um, avoid questions that bring yes or no into play. So things like you know, are you interested, or would would this be something you want to do? You know, could I interest you in something like? Would you like to go ahead? All of those questions bring yes and no into play. And for those of you that study the brain and psychology. Um, yes and no lives in a fearful part of, it, of the brain. So when I'm selling, I like to keep it much more open, like what would need to happen for us to do some business? Um, you know, when was the last time you reviewed uh, whether or not this is a good opportunity? Like how many more sales would you need to make for this to be the greatest investment you've ever made? Who else is involved? Who else benefits? Which program are you looking at? Like, like I I'm looking to involve them and their brain a lot more than me and my brain. Um, because, you know, humans in the 21st century, they select you now. We're getting selected online. So by the time they get to you, all you've got to do is gather information. And that requires good quality, open questions. Simple as that. All right. And again, in my book, um, there's actually a framework for that. And you can 
again, have a look at it if you want to. And if you don't, that's fine too. But it will just give you a bit of a feel for um, what questions to ask and when. And the ones you like, use them. And the ones you don't like, ignore them. All right. So look, last, lastly, really on this, um, massive believer that if you want to turn, if you want to be conversational, um, as it should be, then be conversational and have some structure and discipline if you want to be successful. Otherwise, you'll just have lots of chitty chatties over coffee waffy kind of thingy wingy with an emaily wee emaily kind of get back to me in the new yeary kind of thingy wingy. All sounds lovely, lovely kind of thingy wingy, and and it's just like really frustrating. So, um, add some more structure and a bit more discipline into your conversations, uh, and I think you'll have a lot more success. All right. So here's a few actions I think you could take straight away. Uh, action number one. <laughs> Like, use your voice to communicate with everybody who did something that hasn't hasn't bought yet. So, I don't know, you might have done a masterclass or they might have attended something or they might have been onto a website, downloaded something. Like, you have to, and if you don't want to ring them because you're scared, voice note them. Like, um, you know, hey, Keisha, it's Matt. Wanted to say thank you so much for being on the webinar recently. I haven't done a very good job of getting back to you, actually. So here I am today. When's a good time to have five minutes and find out how we might be able to help you moving forwards? And and by the way, if this is a please, Matt, I'm out. Just like send me a thumbs down if you want, um, or just voice note me back and 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 tell me how you would prefer us to move forward or or unsubscribe. You know, whatever. Just use your voice. Like have some conversations. That's the first thing. Um, it's it's like such a simple thing to do. And and, and by the way, anybody that's following you on on social media, people that are receiving emails, uh, people that are on LinkedIn, people that are on your podcast, people that are listening to your, like, you, you got to talk to them because they're the people that are going to give you either um, a great referral because they already know who you are and what you're doing, uh, or they're going to give you some money and go, I, I love your stuff. Let's do some bit. How does it work? What's your offer? You know, they're, they're the people that already know you that you got to get back to first, all right? So the, the next one, this has always worked really well for me, um, is think about everybody you already know in your computer phone or in your world or you're already doing business with and ask them, hey, um, over the last few weeks and months, I've invested in my coaching business, my consultation business or whatever, and I really need a bit of help. Who do you know in your network right now that would massively benefit by being in my network? Like, that is such an easy thing to do. I started this company. I cold called my sister doing this. The first cold call I made was to my sister. Like, I already knew if you're going to cold call, cold call people, you know. And she was like, yeah, I know this person, that person. And that's how I start my business. So, yeah, they're easy things. Uh, next one, if you if you want to make a bit more money before Christmas, is ask yourself this question. Like, who do I already know? that qualified themselves as being interested by taking an action that seemed to be a good value as much that I could get back to today. Well, that question is a game changer. And there's loads of them. Absolutely loads of them. I asked myself this this morning. I was like, oh my gosh, there is someone, you know, there's someone all the time. So, um, yeah, you've got to have these in your armory, really. And, and remember, like, if, if you're like going, oh yeah, but they didn't buy last time. Like, just because they didn't buy last time, it doesn't mean say they won't buy this time. So that's just a mindset thing, all right? So lastly, um, to finish, really, it's it's around having a conversation starter. So if you're worried about, like, moving back towards someone or you want a bit of structure, here's my structure. I always make sure at the very beginning of any conversation, particularly if it's unannounced, but it's someone I know, um, I always say thank you. I always give them a very specific reason. And, and then I always ask them a question. And I make the question about them and very outcome-based and progressive. So I don't hide behind, oh, you know, I just thought I could touch your base and chat and see how things are at your end. I'm much more intentional. I'm just like, you know, hey, Dawn, it's Matt. Oh, Matt, how you doing? Like, firstly, Dawn, thanks for taking the call completely out of the blue. I do have a reason. And people are like, what's your reason? You know, this morning, I sat down with my team and I said, who do we know that it's a great values match that's in our world um, that we haven't done a very good job of getting back to yet? Um, that we think we might be able to do a bit of business with and your name is at the top of the list so here I am um, like what would need to happen for us to do a bit of business with you like something as obvious and simple as that if you're in rapport and if you know the person it's it's very progressive it's very intentional um, and it served me so well over the years um, to have that structure and I use that structure by the way I use it in every conversation I have today 
I use it in every conversation I have tonight. If I'm lucky enough to be alive tomorrow, I use it in every conversation I have tomorrow. All right. So um, that's it from me. Now, um, I'm conscious that hopefully you've taken lots of notes. And Dawn has asked me um, to create a little bit of space uh, for you to ask me any question. Now, before we do, the worst thing that can happen to somebody like me is to say what questions you've got and then nobody asks a question. Um, so, like, I'm going to give you 60 seconds or so to go back to your... Keisha's already got one. Thank you. Go back to your original note that you took 45 minutes ago. And, and just put a star next to anything that's sort of stimulated a question. And what I'll do is in the next sort of 10 minutes, I'll get in as many as I can. So what that means is I like questions that are under 10 seconds or less. Uh, and then if I need any um, background info, I'll, I'll ask you. But that means we can get through a few more people. All right. Fair enough. I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to go back to your original note. Keisha, do you want to unmute and ask a question? Lovely to see Hiya. you. Lovely to see you. Thank you very much. Really, really interesting um, and really useful. I think one of the things for me, and I'll, I'll be, I'll work on the ten, is um, I'm used to clients previously just coming to me, um, and so I never had to do the sales sales talk, and so that's my major um, challenge. I've moved geographical location. I no longer have the same visibility, and so now it's how to start the conversation with people yeah, right. that I don't know. Yeah, good, great question. So um, in under 10 seconds or less, what do you do? So I'm hired by high achieving individuals who have reached a plateau and they are at that point where they're wanting something else, they're wanting something new and they're wanting competition, they're wanting a new goal. And so they're looking for an accomplished uh, thinking partner and we work together to get them to that new adventure and doing something new and smashing those targets. Yeah, cool. So um, I'd like a little bit more clarity. So um, I'm, am I male, female? Like who's it for? So both. So one of the things is I've never niched. Um, so I've worked with tech, uh, a lot of tech, a lot of oil and gas, um, and also within sport. And so, they've so it's like if you're if you're the tech, so if you're in like the tech space, you're a C, uh, you're a uh, in the C-suite, uh, and you're at crossroads in your life, and you want a new adventure. Um, I'm a the new adventure coach or something like that. Yeah. All right. Cool. So I think look, firstly, how I started was um, like my 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 world was like if you've got a sales team, and you believe they could be performing better. And you're looking for a consultant. It's me. Um, <laughs> that was about as good as it got to start with, which is a niche at the end of the day. Um, and then how I started was, I went to, um, I went through my computer phone, and I literally line by line that everybody I already know that I felt, in some way, shape, or form, might know somebody who might need me. Right. So literally, I made a list. The first list I made was it got 24 people on it. And how I, I used this structure in front of you. And I rang my sister. I was like, hi, sis, how you doing? She was like, is someone dead? You never ring me in the day. I was like, no, no. She's like, are you all good? I went, I'm all good. I said, um, I, I need some help. And she went, what help do you need? And I said, over the last few weeks and months, I've decided I'm starting a consultancy business today that's specializing in sales, and you've got to have a team. Who do you know right now that might benefit from me talking to them and being in my community? That's how I started. And then literally, I found one, did business with one, found another one, did business with one. And while I did that, I just built up a little Facebook group from scratch, uh, which was called like, you know, um, I can't remember what it's called, like um, ethical sales group or something like that. Just kept it simple. And then I slowly built it up. And then and now I've got like 44,000 names and followers and all the rest of it. But five years ago, I had, I think my mom, you know, I think it was me and my mom. Um, and that was fine because I was just starting out. So um, start small, aim big. Uh, and, and I guarantee you that you already know somebody that knows someone 
that is in the C-suite that's looking to leave but needs someone to help them do it. Um, and that's where the adventure coach might come in. All right. Uh, amazing. What, what did you learn? What did you learn? Give me your, in under 10 seconds or less, your key learning. Um, Keisha, if you want to unmute, what's your key learning? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um, the key learning from that bit or the key learning yeah, within that, the company? Um, how has that helped you? Uh, I think one of the things is I've actually got that list and I started reaching out to people already. Um, so I will follow up with those people and actually, you know, finish those conversations because it was booking in time rather yeah, than it, just doing that call. Yeah, create a starting point for them. It might be a little LinkedIn group where you start pulsating some of your philosophy, some of your message, where they can get to know you a little bit more uh, and just start small and big. That, that's my advice. Thank you. All right. Um, who else in this group has got a question? You can raise your hand or unmute yourself. Hey, Matt. Um, can you hear me? Am I? Yeah. Hello, am I how are you doing? Hi. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, first of all. Um, secondly, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with being on camera. Yep. And especially in social media, I know it's the way forward. And so I need to get used to doing videos and self-promotion generally. My question to you would be, is it better to rehearse it and practice and practice it so that when you decide to do a video, that it's quite well rehearsed and professional? Or would you say just be your authentic self and just be brave to put yourself out there and those that want to connect with you and relate to you will, yeah. or over time you'll just get better at it because you've done it so many times, or is it better just to, you know, kind of stay away because it won't be perfect enough? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great question. And uh, firstly, thank you for being on camera. And even though you're saying you don't like it, I think you're, let me ask you a question. Would you like this hard, medium or soft? This answer. Um, hard hard yeah I think you're telling yourself a story about being on camera that's not true I think you're great on camera I think you're really authentic and also you know the answer to the question you just asked you don't need me to answer it I think it's just be yourself yeah and yeah, just of course. go for it yeah. oh by the way if you're like <laughs> hello it's just the thing isn't it I'm Helen lovely to meet you all so on today's video they'll switch you off like you're losing within one breath they'll go she's just another person who doesn't like being on camera who is not authentic now um the, the like go live you'll hate it but go live um and that's that's where you learn um you know how do you stop a child from getting burned on the fireplace don't don't put a fire grill there Okay. Like you've, got to, you've got to give it a go. So uh, the other thing, I just want to check in. Like, who says you've got to go on video? Um, From what I've read in terms of marketing and researched, it's the most effective way. Um, I do a lot of articles. I do a lot of posts. But like you said, it's all black and white and it's people reading. And I'm okay taking photographs. That's fine it's not as raw as this. So to go on camera and actually have conversations almost and, yeah. you know, be live, um, I just find scary. Yeah, I do moment. too. Yeah, I do too. And, and you know, I get, um, you know, I get nervous. I'm speaking in front of 500 people in a, in a few, you know, a couple of hours. And actually I think it's, it's, it's your uh, ego's way of keeping you safe. And it's, you know, just say thank you and then push through it anyway is my, my advice. Um, thank the ego. I mean, look, you've got two things that are obvious to me about you is um, you've got a lot of authentic, um, you know, I could tell that you care about people and care about what you're doing. And that comes across like really quickly. Um, and I, I would lean into that if I was you a lot. Um, and if you are able to come out from behind, you know, from behind the computer and and, and from, uh, I think you, you, I think you're a very good communicator. Uh, so, uh, 
you've got authenticity and care and passion in your vibe. That's how it comes across to me. So I think you probably just need to go and have a look at the, the story that you're telling yourself from the past um, and change it. I'm doing that at the moment myself with something. It's not easy work, but who said being an entrepreneur was easy? Like it's not, it's fucking hard. Uh, bloody hard. So sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, like it's just hard, you know? So, and being alive is hard, isn't it? <clears throat> it's like, it's you know, your heart, right? You got to work at yourself all day, every day, and and also you have to remember that every single second you're alive is is a real bonus. So, um, I think that you should be your authentic self. And what I would do is when you go live, say, "Gotta be honest, doing a live, I'm pretty nervous." So let me tell you what the the live's about. Like, just call yourself out, and people will love you for it. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. Very helpful. So, um. The last thing from me is I actually have a gift for those of you that want it. And you might not want it, um, but if you do, um, my team will uh, send you my book for free. Um, you just have to do something for us now. Dawn's about to, I think, Dawn, uh, put a link into the comments box. So you do have to opt in and give us your details. Um, but in return, I'm going to send you a few goodies. Now, if you never see me again, but you do have the book. I want you to make me a promise that if you don't read it, you'll listen to it. And if you listen to it, if you don't listen to it, read it. Because one, there are trees that have to die and be cut down for that book. So please don't waste it. Um, but also I want you to know that I wrote that book as a tool. I didn't write it to make any money. Um, and to this day, I um, I do get little checks in the post every six months from Amazon, but it doesn't cover a, um, a nice dinner for me and my missus. Um, so I use it as, as a tool for people that are interested in getting better at sales um, to give them some more structure and framework um, to really support your conversations. Um, so all I ask is that give, give it a go. I wrote it. So you can read it in two and a half hours, top to bottom. But have your, have your marker pen with you as well, because there'll be some lines you love and there'll be some lines that aren't relevant. And that's fine. But I wrote it as a tool. I, I get messages from around the world from consultants, coaches, experts, trainers, author, speakers saying, I just read page 37 and I've just, I've just had the best sales conversation of my life. Thank you. So um, all I ask is if you do get it, like use it and uh, refer back to it. I keep it with me all the time. I, I use it. It's like a, it's like a manual. Uh, I use it as a manual. Um, and then lastly, please connect with me if you want to on social media. I'm on all major social media platforms. Um, my last name is Elwell, E-L-W-E-L-L. -E -L -L. Um, so, you know, if you want to join my, um, join my world and <clears throat> that's how you spell my name. <clears throat> whatever your social media platform is, um, please connect with me and join the community that I've, I've built. I'm really proud of the community I've built, actually. It's, um, it's got one big common denominator, and that is business owners that want to be ethical and serve others. So if that's you, you're in the right place. So um, thanks, Dawn. There's two links there. Um, I'll keep them in the comments box below. <clears throat> uh, put your details in and we'll send you some love. All right. Uh, before you go, or before I go, because we're right on time, thank you for your contribution. Type in the box below if there was one key takeaway from today that's really helped you. Um, what What is it? Type it in the box below, please. I'm big and ask the daily question. Love it, Keisha. Range of services and ensuring uh, ensuring you leave with action. David, if you um, reach out to me privately, mate, um, I'll get one of my team to send you my written proposal document. Any of you, if you want my written proposal template, I'll send it to you. Uh, just send me a note on social. And you can see how I um, position my fees and give offers. And, and if you want to, if that stimulates help, then please use it. Um, just, just send me a note and I'll get it done for you. 
Um, in Jeffries, to be more focused in my sales confidence, love that. But the more confident you are, the easier it is for other people to be uh, make a confident purchasing decision. Uh, Aurora says, phone everyone who I didn't sell or connect properly to reconnect. Love it. Keisha says, thank you, thank you. Your voice is a gift. Ask clients what they actually want. Love it. Last thing from me, if you do want to take a photo, I'm going to do a smile. Um, and if you want to tag me in or tag each other in, I think we should all smile. Get your phones out. Get your computer phones out, you lot. This would be a good one for Helen. <laughs> so um, I'm going to get my phone out. And then if you want to tag me in social media or anything like that, you're, re you're ready. You got your phones out. Ready? Okay, we've got to take a photo of the screen. You got a smile. Ready? And I'm going to, um, Dawn, can I tag IAPC and M in or something? You got Absolutely. a hashtag? Yes. Right. All right, cool. Well, uh, tag me in. Lovely to see you all. Um, God bless you all. And remember this. Um, all you've got to do is find people that would dramatically benefit from buying your product or service. Uh, ask them a few questions. If it's a great fit, send them an offer. Let them decide which offer suits them best. Yeah. And I hope we were a great warm up act um, for your big gig this afternoon. Good luck. Totally. You, it, I'm you, sure. were, you, you were the big gig. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. See you soon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye bye.